Hi guys, it's Dan and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to take a look at creating some cool interaction. Now recently, I've seen a game where you can uh, use your hand to highlight an object uh, and then you can overlay a target graphic on that object to indicate whereabouts you're pointing. I thought that was really cool and something that's quite simple to put together and I thought you guys might be interested. So let's take a look. If you're like me and love everything to do with gaming, game development and new technologies, then check out my channel. I've got dozens of videos on how to create your own games and the latest in tech. And if you like what you see, why not consider a subscription? Thanks very much and enjoy the video. So it's probably easier if I actually show you what I mean. In a second, I'm going to run this scene and you are going to I'm going to be able to look at some certain objects and display a, a target overlay um, that corresponds to the point at which I'm aiming at on that object. Now, let's just press play here and we'll dive right in and I'll show you what I mean. Wait for Unity to wake up. Right, here we go. So I'm in my scene. I've got my hand here. Now, at the moment, I'm ray casting from my hand. Um, and when I hit a valid object, you see I get this target up here and I can move it around. And, you know, if we wanted to, we could select different areas of the object. But this target just gives us like an indicator of whereabouts we're pointing. And you can see as we go around the object, it, it aligns to the surfaces, which is really cool. And you've got the same for the sphere just there. So how can we achieve this effect in VR? It's actually really simple. It's the same kind of technique you use when you're instantiating like bullet holes in a model after you've shot it with like a gun or something. Same kind of deal. So we'll dive right in, have a look at how it's put together, and you can create this effect yourself. So we're going to go from scratch for this one. I'm not going to show you how to set up the XR interaction stuff um, and get in Unity already. I think uh, I've got enough videos on my channel that show you how to do that. So once you've got XR interaction toolkit installed and you've set up your project, for using the XR plugin management. Go ahead and create a new scene. I'm going to remove the camera. First thing I'm going to do is go to XR and create a XR origin, um, which is going to drop my XR components in the scene. And I'm going to click on my XR origin. I'm going to change the tracking mode to floor. And in my XR interaction manager, I'm going to add in an input action manager hit the plus and this is just going to be looking for our input so we can track our controllers and we're using the samples for that that you can download with the XR interaction toolkit so just going to go ahead and use my XRI default input actions so that's kind of that part set up just bog standard XR setup using the interaction toolkit then we're going to go ahead and create a plane just create some geometry quickly that we can use and let's zoom in a bit Let's scale this up. Boom. Put a slightly darker material on here. We can see what we're doing. Pull that floor. Floor. Then we just need to create some game objects that we can use as our hit objects. So I'm going to just create a cube. No expense spared on the graphics. And just need to make sure that it's got a collider on. And all the default primitives have. Why is it called www? Call that cube and we'll create another one and we'll make a sphere. Put it at zero. Make sure everything's at zero. Keep it all nice and neat. It's so annoying how it doesn't put it at zero, zero, zero and just create it from the from the menu. Right, there we go. So we've got our floor and a cube and a sphere. Awesome. And then we've also got our XR origin with our camera and stuff and all our hands geared up and ready to go. So next up, we need to create our target overlay. And this is a game object that's gonna get turned on and overlaid on the object when we've hit it. So we're gonna go ahead and create a 3D object. We're gonna use a quad. Let's bring it back to zero, zero, zero. Make it, instead of a, like a meter or one unit, we're gonna change it to 20 centimeters. So we put 0.2 and 0.2. And then I've created a material here. This is our target graphic. This is just a normal standard material using the cutout rendering mode. And I've got a PNG of just a circular graphic, which has just been slapped on there. So I'm going to just go and whack that on my quad. You can see it's popped in there. Now, the forward, direct, the forward direction of this object is quite important. When we overlay this graphic over the top of um, the sphere, it's going to align the wrong way around because if you see here um we've got our quad 
which you can't see from the back, but the forward direction is going that way. So we need to be able to see the quad with the forward direction facing that way. So what we'll do is we'll create an empty game object, call it target, and put it at zero, zero, zero. And then we'll drag in our quad with our image on it, and we're just going to rotate it 180 degrees. Like so. So now we've got our target graphic facing the right way. And this also means we can change the art to anything we want at a later time without affecting the target object. Nice. That's the target. We're going to go ahead. Let's turn it off for a minute. We don't want to be able to see it all the time. Well, that's actually all the art setup we need to worry about. Now we're going to create a script. Let's go into a script folder. You can see it. The stupid microphone's in the way. I'm going to right click, go create, C sharp script. And we're going to call this overlay graphic. And once that's compiled, we're going to go down to our right hand controller. Because this, this is the hand we can use for our aiming. And we're going to put our overlay graphic straight on to our game object. You can see it's dropped in there and we'll double click it and open up in Visual Studio. Okay, so here we go. This is actually going to be quite a simple little script. Um, and we, we don't need to start or update. We can go ahead and remove those. And let's go ahead and just bump the size up a little just so you can see what's going on a little bit. So we're going to need three variables. These are all going to be private. Um, I'm going to put them in so we can see them in the inspector. So I'm going to make them serialize fields. I'm going to put my keyword of private there. And it's going to be a type transform, this first one. And this is going to be our target graphic. That's what we're using as our overlay over the top of the 3D stuff. And we're going to need another one. Uh, this time it's going to be another transform. And this is going to be uh, on the objects that we're ray casting from. So we'll call this linked hand position. And we, that's going to do it for a minute. We'll leave it there. We've got one more to come in later, but I, I'll do that when we get to it. So we're going to be using fixed update because we're going to use in the physics system for our ray cast. So I'm going to go private void fixed update. And we want to create a local variable here, raycast hit, and we're going to call this hit. So now we're going to perform our ray cast. We're just going to shoot a ray from our hand out into the scene and see if we hit anything. So we're going to say if physics dot raycast. Now we're going to put in where the, the raycast is going to start from. That's going to be our linked hand position. And we're going to get the position of that. And now we need a direction to shoot our ray out in. And we're just going to use our linked hand position's forward direction. So pointing out in front of us. Then we're going to store what we hit in our raycast hit variable just here. We can say out hit. So anything we hit is going to get stored in there. And let's say we want our line to be 10 meters, our ray cast to be 10 meters long. So then what do we do if we hit something? Well, we're going to need, if it is an object that we can hit, we're going to, first, we need to move our target graphic that we have in our scene to the point that we've hit in our object. So we can say target graphic. We want to grab that position and set it to the hit point. So you can say hit dot point, it's all built in for us. Now if we do that, it's going to slap it directly on the hit point. So the, the two meshes are going to be touching really. If the collider is very up close to the mesh, which in most cases it is, especially on primitive objects, then you're going to get a bit of Z fighting and it's going to be the target graphics going to look like it's flickering. We don't want that. So we're going to offset the target graphic position from the surface a little bit. To do that, it's really easy. You can just say hit dot normal. I'm going to times that by 0.001. Just a little low value, just to bump it forward from the mesh object a little bit. Cool, so now we've moved that target graphic to the position. We need to actually orientate it so it's angled correctly. So for that, we're going to say target graphic dot rotation. And we're going to use the quaternion dot look rotation. And we want to get the hit objects normal. Now that is going to orientate our graphic to the angle of the surface that we've hit. It sounds like it should be really complicated, but we've actually got a lot of built-in 
functions and methods that we can leverage in order to make this fairly simple for us. Now, once we've moved it and aligned it, we need to actually activate it. So we can say if but the target graphic, if that game object is not already on in the hierarchy, if it's not activated, then we need to activate it. So we can say target graphic game object set active to true. And you could also just toggle the mesh render on and off as well if you wanted to. So then that caters for if we've hit something, and then if we haven't hit something, we can say else. We can just go ahead and turn it off. And we can just duplicate this code here like that. And then if our target graphic is on, this returns true. If, it, if our target graphic's on, go ahead, turn it off. We haven't hit anything. We don't need to see it. And save. Now that out the box should be it. So let's jump back into Unity. Let's scroll down to where that script is. And you can see we need to set a couple of things up. We need to tell about the target graphic. That's easy. We'll just drag and drop our target graphic in there. And then the linked hand position is just the position of the, the object that we're ray casting from, in which case it's the hand that this script is sitting on. So we can just drop our right hand controller in there. Now it doesn't matter that we've got all the default XR ray interactors in here. I mean, if we were really clever, we could probably leverage this ray interactor and tweak it and extend the code a little bit. I like to keep all my stuff separate that I create um, where possible and have different systems. So that's why I've got separate code here doing its own little ray cast. So let's go ahead and see if this works. So um, I'm going to go ahead and press play. Jump right in. So when we highlight a valid game object, you can see it activates on the sphere there, it snaps to the floor, and then and the same with the cube. But what you'll notice is we can move off of it and it still remains on. Uh, and this is because our target object also contains a collider. So we're actually ray casting, hitting the target object, <laughs> which is getting nearer and nearer to me, freaking me out, go away. Uh, and it's it's keeping the target on. So that's a really quick fix, let me show you. We're gonna dive into our target. Let's extend it down, select the quad, and just get rid of the mesh collider. So, and then now we're gonna press play again. You see, it's on, we can come off, and it, and it deactivates. Same with the cube, targeting our cube and then um, it aligns to all the surfaces. Really cool. And the same with that. So this could be useful if like, you've got uh, like a test in VR and you have to uh, select specific object in the mesh. Maybe you need to show where there's an error on an object or you need to interact with a certain location. You do all sorts of that. And I saw it, um, this was actually a question asked to me um, by one of the subscribers on YouTube and I thought that would make a really cool topic. So. There we go. But what about if you don't want to show this target on everything that has a collider? I'm pleased to say that also, is also an easy fix. Let's jump back into our code quickly. And we're going to create another serialized field. It's still going to be private. And this time it's going to be of type layer mask. And we're going to call it layers to hit and go ahead and go down to line 16 here where we've got that, where we're doing our physics ray cast. And at the end, add a comma. And we're gonna add in that layer to hit. So now we're gonna ray cast. It's gonna go from the position in the forward direction. It's gonna store it in a hit. It's gonna be 10 meters long the ray. And it's only gonna collide with stuff that's in the layers to hit variable. Go ahead and save. Jump back into Unity. And then on that script for our XR graphic overlay, we now have a layers to hit. And I've already got this in here because I've been testing. If I've got a target overlay layer, which I can select. If you don't know how to create a new layer, you literally go up to layers here at the top in any window for the time being. Go add layer and you type it in there. Then you go back to your game object uh, and you would set it to layers to hit target overlay and our scripts but then you also need to assign that layer to these balls 
So you can put it on a target overlay layer. Like so. So then when we run, we should be able to hit our cube and our sphere. Boom, boom, but it won't work on the floor. So then we've got um, a little bit of customization to that as well. So that's it. I really hope you've in. Oh, where, am I, where have I gone? Menu. So that's it for this week. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial. So just a little one, and um, just to show you how you can you can do something very cool and um, different in VR to highlight different parts of an object. Next week we're going to try and carry on with our VR game a little bit. Still need to add in our timer and our bomb that needs diffusing as well. So I need to have a look at creating a 3D model for that, and then we can write, record the tutorial. So until then, see you later.